Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Sunrise Safari Wild Earth here on the 5th of June. It is World Environment Day today. We are going to be celebrating the beauty of our Earth here at Juma Private Game Reserve in South Africa and the world renowned Sabi Sands. Good morning, everybody. My name is Cedric Dold, and behind the camera with me this morning, we've got a Panda here on Rusty. And of course, on Wendy, we're going to have uh, Rexon and uh, Gert. And of course, joining us then, Pridelands, is going to be Chris and BK. But yes, thank you so much for joining us this morning. And I'm hoping that we are going to find some fantastic sightings for everybody on this beautiful, uh, crispy, chilly morning. But I'm sure it's going to definitely start warming up very soon. But as you can see, we are live. And uh, once again, we are interactive. So please. Send your comments, questions, and suggestions to our social media platform, hashtag Wild Earth on Twitter, or just go onto our website, wildearth.tv, and just go onto our channel page and make sure that you do register with us. And um, of course, all the young kids around under the age of 18 years old, please pop us an email at kidsquestions at wildearth.tv. So please send all those comments and questions through and uh, yes let us know what you want to find out about uh, what we are seeing and I'm uh, hoping that we can answer all your questions yeah I am sitting here at uh, Gary Cut Line on Central Junction I am thinking of uh, looking for Columbus Cubs we did have the two of them last night here at this junction I don't see any, see any tracks around you. I might just head a little bit further down central and to see if we can pick up on any of the tracks of uh, Columbus, uh, Columba and her two cubs. And uh, yes, I know Rexon as well. He will be in the area. He's also looking for Columba. I think he said he bumped into her last night there on Vuyatela Axis. So I think he is definitely going to be starting off from that side. But yes, I'm uh, looking forward today uh, to the sightings today. And I think it's uh, going to be fantastic. And I'm hoping that uh, it's going to be quite entertaining as always. Um, but you know, I definitely got my gloves on, got my jacket, my beanie. So it is a nice uh, crispy morning this morning. So let's uh, see what we can find here this morning. So I think I'm going to head, head towards Central. So while we continue on Central, let's uh, head to the weather to see what it is like around here at Juma and in Pridelands today. Morning and welcome here on Safari Live. Beautiful morning. The sun is rising. You can see the colors, the contrast with the sun. Unbelievable from my staff, Rex and uh, Hart behind the camera. We are now at uh, uh, Ops Road trying to check around in the area. In the area, area on, we just spotted the tracks look like uh, the Lamba on Vietella axis heading, heading is back to the east pretty much she might be not far from the area of shortcut galago we're also going to check the area helping on uh, cedric to find this leopard uh, early this morning i believe it's also a male that uh, is moving around in the area yesterday i followed the tracks all the way down here and cut back into the north today it looked like the tracks come back again from shortcut galaga john vuyatela axis and headed west my plan of the day is to check the area maybe we might be lucky finding one of these cats uh, that is moving in and out in the surrounding but generally We'll be heading more to the south, pretty much um, Zoe's road uh, towards uh, Three House. It could be um, also activities around in that area. I know that uh, the buff have crossed to the west. It might be the right time with the lions to come back in the area. I understand that uh, the Kuhumas also cross to the south. It can be possible that uh, Kuhumas or the breakaway from the west coming east. One Earth. 
This phrase highlights the challenges of collective action between nations. It emphasizes the great test of our time. Achieving environmental change cannot be met by countries acting alone. Head over to the Wild Earth Shop to buy your only One Earth merchandise and create awareness for global change this World Environment Day. Are you a fan of the Juma clan? If the answer to this is yes, then you are cordially invited to our Hyena Halabaloo starting on the 13th of June. During this week, we want to take a trip down memory lane. Please send in your favorite Juma clan moments to hahina at wildearth.tv by the 7th of June and we will dig into our archives and try our hardest to play it out during this week of Hahina celebrations. I feel like uh, I've, I've chosen the right area to start in the morning uh, checking leopard. This is the area where we have seen. Let's take this opportunity and uh, go over to Cedric. He's uh, having a surprise for the morning. Yeah, and I did have uh, Columbus two cubs. I think the one is coming back out now. Yes, can you believe it? We are at Giraffe Crossing. We did find the two youngsters as I came into the crossing. I had them on this uh, dead or this fallen over tree. There's the other one coming up. Looks like they're busy playing around here, the two of them. Yeah, what a start for a Sunday morning sunrise drive with the two little leopard cubs of Columba up and down. Of course, clearly she's not here because they're being very naughty, as you can see they are. Definitely moving around here. Yeah. I might just have to go back a little bit. Um, just want to see what they can do here. Yeah? Yeah, let me just go a little bit back so we can see. Oh, uh, they are playing all over the show. Yeah, I just want to see if we can get them nicely there. I might, they might disappear into this drainage line. Yep, there they go. Unfortunately, yeah, we can't follow and go off-roading for the leopard cubs. We have to remain on the road. Darcy, yes, good morning, good morning to you too. Thank you for joining us. And uh, unfortunately, uh, the little ones have just decided to go into this drainage line. <laughs> but yeah, what a good start. At least we know the two little cubs are still here at Giraffe Crossing on Central Road. So almost practically where we left them last night, uh, just a little bit down into the dip itself. And uh, yeah, it looks like they are almost probably going to go further in. Uh, to the drainage line. We'll, we'll sit around here a little bit and hopefully they will come back onto this dead tree. Um, and uh, we'll see, hopefully they come and play again around here. But uh, uh, we'll also just keep an eye for Tlumba as well. I know that Rexon has got his eyes and his tracking skills in there and I'm sure he's going to try and track Tlumba. Um, but it's nice, as you can see, once again, very nice area that uh, she left her cubs. A very, very safe area. A lot of trees around here, a lot of thickets. So if any uh, other predators do come through here, the cubs, will, they'll know exactly what to do. Um, they're getting to that age already to know what is, uh, what's to be, what's safe and what's not safe. But uh, I think especially that uh, they're around here with the Juma clan, the hyena clan, I'm sure they are well trained already on keeping their eyes open and ears open for any prayer, any danger. But unfortunately, they have now just gone into the uh, into the drainage. But we will still sit here and we will remain, and hopefully, uh, they will pop out again for us. But definitely, what a great start! Find a way into into the kill to eat get their fill in there as well. But they're also going to be told off. See, it's, lions are not great at sharing their fill. Okay, guys. Let me just take in frustration out on the other lion, but you see, it was interesting. This morning we were driving and suddenly we heard a lot of commotion. I think the wild dogs might have caught 
an impala then or the leopard might have caught the impala and as it was dragging at the wild dog sword started chasing the leopard up into the tree and then the hyenas came to steal it but, uh, what an incredible sighting Yeah, definitely it was, it is, it's nice, at least we got to see them briefly, but it's a, a good way to start. And hopefully Tlalamba will make a way back here yeah, and then it'll be fantastic and then we can see all three of them together. Well, we just uh, continue just to remain here. Yeah? Uh, let's uh, go to Pridelands to, uh, and Chris and then wants to say good morning to everybody. Good morning, good morning everybody and welcome to yet another stunning sunrise here at Pridelands. It just never gets old. Just take a minute to truly appreciate this. At the same time, we just waiting for that first rays to heat us up. Not as cold as the last couple of days, but the chill is still there in the air. Basically our plan today, we're going to just have some fun, we're going to walk around a bit and literally see what the bush provides. My name is Chris and I should probably introduce our camera ops for today. Some say that his droppings has been found as far north as Iceland and that he has a full tattoo of his face, on his face. All I know, his name is BK. And he's gonna be operating cam ops for us today. <laughs> Good morning, Rolling Trouble. Rolling Trouble saying BK is just showing off now. He does that, Rolling Trouble. He, 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 he does that quite often. But I'm delighted to have worked with this guy for the last couple of weeks. I always enjoy and cherish time spent with him. He really seems to bring out, almost amplify what we have out here. Seems to capture these moments. But yeah, let's see what this morning will bring. We're going to formulate a bit of a plan to go walking. But in the meantime, let's head over to Cedric, who also loves spending time with BK. But he's got something else that are spotted. Sorry, uh, we had that Lama's uh, cubs, of course, on uh, screen for a while, and uh, as soon as it came over to us, <laughs> typical, I don't know why, uh, it's uh, Murphy's Law decided to uh, duck into the grass, but you can still see uh, an ear, uh, you can still see an ear that's there. <laughs> uh, but uh, I don't know why they actually even went into... 
<laughs> yeah, I know they might be playing hard and, hard and seek. But uh, yeah, the, I think with the grass is uh, very wet. I mean, it's a lot of dew on this grass. So, you know, leopards is not the, they're not the, uh, they're not so keen on uh, wet grass and walking through wet areas and all that. So, um, I wonder if they're not going to be staying there too long. I think they're going to get a little bit miserable in that uh, wet grass and start moving. But we will we're just gonna just hang back still yeah. As you can see there is still a little bit of a view on one of them. So not too far away we left them actually. They just went down from that dead tree and went to the bottom. The Safari Guide of the Year 2022 is approaching us rapidly. This year we'll be heading to Bushwise Field Guides at the Southern African Wildlife College from the 27th June till the 2nd of July. We will soon meet all our contestants who are vying for the prize of being the very best of the best. And the judges who will put them through their paces. Join me, Steve Falkenbridge, as we dream it, guide it, win it. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Copy, copy. Thanks, Pete. Yeah, no, they, uh, I think these cubs definitely chose a very cool, very cold, not cool, actually cold uh, area because, you know, this, uh, these dips are very, very cold and you go through these dips. I think this is where all the cold air is lying at the moment. So, um, yeah, they definitely... So it's a very cold area for Panda and myself to sit here. But just seeing uh, these little cubs, it's, uh, it warms my blood up. And definitely I don't mind wearing my shorts this morning on such a cold morning watching leopard cubs. Uh, Sir Fifty, good morning. Thank you for joining us on our sunrise safari, and welcome to uh, Wild Earth. And uh, yes, it is World Environment Day, so fantastic that you're joining us here today on our beautiful uh, drive. Yes, uh, spotted ear is better than nothing, Sir Fifty. I fully agree with you. Uh, so I will be remaining. I'm sure you know cubs. They don't. They don't just sit down and, and do nothing. They're always up and down and playing around. And you never know, things always play out. Maybe old Tulumba might even end up here in the next few minutes calling the cubs to take them to maybe a kill. You never know. You know things change up very, very quickly here. So we will remain and watch just a, an ear. It's good for us. Is it? Can you even see an ear? Oh. Oh, I can barely see one, yeah. It's there. <laughs> it is there. <laughs> and they're so well camouflaged. It just shows you. You can drive right past you. You won't even know. Yeah, I know. Look. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's movement. There they are. No, there's definitely. They're there. Look, if it has to see, if that uh, cub has to stand up, you'll see it. And you'll see him definitely. But uh, you're just going to hang back and hopefully we get a little bit of movement there. Yeah. there. I don't see the thanks. <laughs> but wow, good, good start. Now, I just got an update as well, so I might have to hit that side or I'll try to get all of Rexon. Uh, apparently, they got Langa, uh, but on Gary Main, so it's on our boundary, uh, just uh, close to Cheetah Cut Line, Gary Main Junction. So uh, she is that side, it's a little bit of a distance for us, but I'll see. Maybe Rexon might be in the vicinity, and uh, if we can maybe get to see her. We haven't seen her for such a long time, and uh, I would love to see that female gun. She's also very pretty. Oh, 
All right, so this seems like uh, Rexon is going to be making his way to uh, that uh, uh, sighting. I'm hoping that she remains there. Roger, good morning. Uh, no, I think they just went to go and uh, lay in the grass. Or we, see, we can't even see what's happening there. They might be even laying on uh, a nice little sandy area there where they're very comfortable. I mean, when we saw them this morning, they weren't too bad. They all just looked at us and were playing around on this fallen tree that uh, uh, where we uh, had them earlier. So, no, nah, they're not hiding from us. If they, You'll find that they'll be back and forth. I think they're just waiting for mom to come back. You know, they're always, that's typical cubs, they can't wait. Their tummies are grumbling and rumbling for um, some food. And I think they are more anxious about uh, mom, or mom Clalamba to get back here and maybe hopefully to take them to a kill that she's made. So yes, that's the thing. So I don't think they're hiding from us. It's just by chance they got behind a last uh, tuft of uh, grass there. <sighs> In that tree are two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck. Well, it's not as graceful as... <laughs> as he's a bit hesitant because, well, climbing a tree is not the easiest, but he will get up there eventually. So let's see, there he goes. Look at the power in that. That is a massive 500 pound cat that has just climbed a marula tree and is up in there. How cool is this? I don't know how he's gonna do it, but let's see. Well, you can see the hyenas are far more tolerant of vultures than a lion or leopard would be. Occasionally a hyena will bite sort of a couple of tail feathers out of the back of a vulture but I've never actually seen them, even once they've caught one, um, actually kill it. Oh, there we go! Nearly got him! Yes, as, as everybody does know, it is a world environment day today. It is the 5th of uh, June, and uh, this afternoon on our sunset, uh, this afternoon on our sunset, uh, sunset drive, we, uh, we will have on our first hour, it will be dedicated to all the kids, and we will be talking about a symbiotic relationship between species and uh, the environment that the species have created for other species. So please make sure that you do join us on our sunset safari. But uh, yes, so while we still sit here and hopefully that uh, we get some, uh, any other little visuals of these little ones, uh, let's head over to uh, Rex and to see if he is making his way down to Langa. Welcome back from Talamba's Cups with Cedric. We are on um, Weaver's Nest, heading south towards Chittakatangari, Maine, where it looked like they have spotted Langa. We are rushing to that point to join the location or the sighting. It's a little bit chilly here. We have to drive very slow, otherwise I'm freezing cold. But it looked like, uh, of course, maybe Talamba, she might be heading back direct towards the cups. You might join the cups not so long. If Cedric can be around the tracks of Tlalamba, look like headed east from where we follow up. It might be now very close to Gary Dam, slowly heading to the point. Um, she might uh, really join the cups not so long. Maybe if she haven't made a kill, she's still uh, making its way there. We'll try to go and join Langa. Yeah, I mean, yesterday, before, Hart was just uh, talking about uh, Langa. There's been a long time we haven't seen Langa around in the area. And it looked like uh, Langa, he had the word. And now he's just coming out. Uh, Chita Chita Cut Line, Gary Main. It's in uh, our uh, traversing area. Quite a lot of hyena tracks here look like they're coming from the south. It might be something that uh, was taking place in that area. Maybe the wild dogs are back in the area. Let me observe this uh, carefully. Look like quite a lot of tracks that are on the ground here. Oh, 
the hyenas, they were leading straight to the south, maybe across Gary Main or on Gary Main, who knows. We are going to join Gary Main shortly, and maybe we might uh, get more evidence with this in regard of these tracks where they were heading. If there's any kill around here, maybe a leopard kill, we'll be lucky to see that, who knows. There's John Langa, will be there shortly, I believe. We're gonna join Gary Main in the next one or two minutes and head straight east. It will be nice also checking Gary Main because it's where most of uh, animals crossing from the south to the north in vice versa, especially Lion Park. Look like. Uh Hyena and hippo walking side by side. Terror etched on the expression of little hippo. Look at this last mad dash. Hyena running along beside it. Baby hippo jaws gaping. It's gonna make it. It's gonna make it. It did it. The baby hippo against all odds. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colors, a very useful tote bag, or even a cap. For those in the Southern Hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. All these young leopards that grows up in the area and the females, lucky enough when the females, they will uh, really live in the space of their own mother. And what is going to happen, the mother will really give her a certain portion of her territory. And uh, the new female or the youngster, it has to overlap in other areas. Of course, like Kalamba, uh, the female, the young female, she will be still in the vicinity of uh, Juma. She might uh, overlap into maybe buffer soup or touch wood in, in different location where she feels like more comfortable and more safe, of course, when she operates in that particular area. This is John Garryman. I can hear Franklin. I'm not happy a little bit more deep into the south. It could be another leopard, of course, moving in that particular area. Or it could be something that is taking place. Yes, of course. It will be nice to join Langa and also it will be really amazing because it's been a long time, I believe. I don't know when last uh, we have seen Langa around in the area. As Hart have told me, it looked like uh, it's been some times. Let's uh, take this opportunity and head straight direct to Chita Catlan Garrymen. We're not sure exactly because we get the information from FC and we try to really not lose that opportunity and join in. As it's going down towards the riverbed, it's getting chilly here, guys. Very cold. It's where most cases you find the animals, as far as uh, antelope, they all move into the high ground. High ground is a lot more better than going down towards the river or drainage land, dam areas. In winter, it becomes chilly. It is great if you go towards uh, Cheetah, I mean Cheetah Cheetah cut line. We are aiming Cheetah Cheetah cut line, Gary Man. We are like 400 meters uh, to the point. We'll be uh, joining shortly. Kalamba and Langa are related, not at all. Langa 
is from uh, Cebu female that comes from the South Malamala area. They are not even related at all. Different uh, bloodline of the leopards around in the area. Cebu is more in Malamala to the north of Malamala. Uh, I'm not familiar quite a lot with the leopard that uh, take place there uh, in Malamala, but uh, yeah. It's from Malamala. Let's take this opportunity. And stay here. I can hear the Franklin right here. Very close to Cheetah Cut Line. Gary Main. Franklin are not happy. I can see a game drive vehicle. Whoa! Great. Uh, we will join the sighting. We're not going to struggle here. You know, once a leopard is off into the bush in this kind of a terrain, it's more difficult to keep with the leopard because it will weaving in a drainage line. But look like a, a street vehicle here. We're not going to join the sighting due to protocols of the area. We have to give a space unless if we specially invited. It look like uh, a leopard is going away from the road. Let's take this opportunity and like to set it while we want to try to investigate to get into the sighting of Langa. Uh, yeah, it's very difficult, as I say, that uh, um, yeah, these, uh, uh, these little cubs are all playing around, but they're all up and down all over the show at the moment, and uh, we don't want to put too much on them, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to continue and uh, maybe come back here again later and see if we can uh, maybe get them other side. Hopefully, Tlalamba will be with them, so I'm just going to rather move on. And uh, yes, well, at least we got uh, got a, a visual of them, a quick visual earlier and once or twice. But uh, uh, I think uh, what we're going to do is just uh, yeah, move on and uh, go look. I'm going to go towards uh, Galago Pan and uh, try and see if we can find uh, the mom somewhere, or we can find something else. Let's see. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful, Wild Earth will see it all. Each little flower that opens, each river that does flow. Join us to celebrate World Environment Day for a very special safari show. We want to hear from our Wild Earth Kids this World Environment Day. You are the future protectors of our planet and we want to help you understand what needs to be preserved. We saw a termite mound. We got to see a lot of unique animals. Some trees are male and female. That's pretty cool, right? A whole lot of different creatures. It was amazing that we could ask questions. Kids, send in your questions for our special World Environment Day safari on June the 5th. It was so cool! nest. Well, it's a nest for some bird. I think maybe, I don't know what, but definitely a bird of prey or something like that. In that, uh, it's like, just sorry, I just stopped here on Gary Cutline. I'm just trying to take a look at this. A nice big nest in the fork there. I don't know. Maybe one of for the Wahlbergs that do come through here, of course, in our summertime. Um, but it is a big mess, it's unoccupied at this uh, point of time. So, and many times you'll find um, the big eagles nest like that, they'll build it and then off they go and you'll find uh, the bird species will come and uh, utilize it as well during their time for uh, laying their eggs and uh, without them actually building their own nests. So sometimes those nests can be used by one or two different species of birds. 
So I'm just still looking out and listening out for any of those guys, but I'm not going to put too much pressure on them. Yes, 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 can you believe it? I'm so glad we are going to head over to Wrexham so we can finally get to see old Lunga again. Welcome back from Cedric. We are lucky to find Shasha here. Yeah. She's just listening uh, over Crystal Road to the north. She's come back uh, uh, slightly heading south. And uh, it looks like uh, definitely if he does have to move, she's facing northern direction. We'll be lucky if we cross back to the north and follow out on the writing of Impala. We can hear the Impala writing and she's more uh, caught on that attention to uh, really follow up in the Impala itself. So it looks like she can spot something and looking great. I just uh, go slightly forward to see if we may get the best view of this cup here, yeah, of this uh, young female, not a cup anymore. One of the sub adults that we have in the area from Sibuyu. We know that Langa is the female, and his brother was uh, Shasha, one of the young men that uh, Shreya, of course, beautiful. It's been long, we haven't seen her, but we believe now it is now time for us to enjoy Langa. All these uh, young female, you can see that uh, being so young, it does have uh, a great opportunity to hunt and more successful around in the area. She's always, I mean, alert. I mean, checking different directions. It's not just because of uh, she's concerned about enemy, but to look like uh, she's establishing herself to hunt around in the area, listening to any sound that comes from different uh, direction in order to follow up. Young leopards are a lot more successful, as I was saying, because they have the ability even chasing down scrub here, even baby impala. Even sometimes you tend to see them using the energy because they do have energy to run down the animal down. Unlike the um, leopard that is more experienced, that they wait until the animal get close and piles on top of it. In our, is how actually uh, leopard make a kill surrounding the area. If they're still young like this, Opportunity created seeing a limping impala, you might shoot and uh, chase that particular animal and bring it down because it's still more energy. She's listening. You can see the tradition of ears now and then, but she's caught on something towards uh, north. Wow. I'm not sure how old he is, but I can hear oh, some of the guys here saying three years old. But this soon she might reach a sexual maturity. You know, leopards in general, once they get to three and a half years, they will first um, enter into ostrich for the first time. And it's when she uh, tried to even vocalize, establish herself more. It looks like her longer she will stay more. This area of Chito Chito, Chito cut line, and a part of uh, maybe Torchwood. I'm not sure how far she goes around in the area, but quite a lot. Chito Chito water hole, the is where you'll find lung quite a lot. Is how, what I was saying earlier on, the mother, if you'll have a female, a female is going to stay in that um, area and use other part of the mother's territory, of a, of a territory. Great looking. If you look at the colors of this uh, leopard, she have more darker color looking, according to my eye. It could be just because. Let's uh, let you said uh, you might having surprise with the cubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no. 
I'm so glad here. <laughs> Rex has got lung goes. So many leopards this morning. So many leopards. Well, we can't complain. I just had <laughs> the cub in the gate in such a beautiful position. <laughs> Uh, just, of course, he's just now moving to the south. But, um, yeah, he was just lying you know, sitting in the beautiful sunlight there now. And I think his sister and him are still running up and down here. So, so, so I'm just uh, hanging back here. <laughs> uh, okay, I think he's moving to that termite mound. There's like a little termite mound there, Panda. I think he's just moving that side, I think, very... And do quite a wide berth, yeah. I think it's like his sisters, uh, the two cubs up back and forth here yeah, all over the show. It's very difficult to really kind of uh, sit and uh, get a great uh, view of them. As our global Wild Earth family grows, we know that many of you struggle to get your questions answered during the live safari. Going forward, we will be holding AMAs for our Wild Earth explorers on a regular basis. The first is with our resident leopard whisperer, Tristan Dix. Join me for an AMA on the 8th of June, straight after the Sunset Safari. This will be your chance to ask me anything you like. All you have to do is sign up to be an explorer, and you can meet me here on Juma with your questions ready. To celebrate World Oceans Day, and create awareness for the role that the oceans play in everyday life. Wild Earth has some brand new dive line merchandise in our shop. T-shirts, sweatshirts, bags and even caps. So take the plunge, head over to our shop and see what you can find. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. I'm looking at this termite mound. Go slowly uh, on top of the termite mound. As a thought, yeah, as a thought, we might just get the view of it a, a, a brief glimpse. Th there, you can just see the legs. You can see the panda. There we go. Just on the termite mound. Hello. 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 You waiting for mom? Hmm. You waiting for mom? I'm sure she's on her way back very soon. Yes. I think she went down this road. I think that's why the vivids were going crazy this morning, apparently around about 2, 3 o'clock, around Gary Dam. I'm sure Tlalumba went past the dam itself, going to go and look for something to hunt for the little cubs. And, uh, of course, they keep on... That's why I was like, sitting on the termite mine and just waiting patiently for her return. Yes. I think the nice little position for the cub just to remain on top there. And sniffing. And very curious. So that's what the one thing about the cubs at this age now, I've been around coming coming to about eight months now. Uh, they become very curious in that and they start to you know, they start uh, wandering off and uh, playing around further away from where mom left them and uh, start chasing uh, little Franklins, uh, tree squirrels, things like that. And uh, this is very much a learning curve for them and honing on each, uh, on, on the hunting skills. And it's nice that they've got each other, that, uh, their siblings. Uh, usually if there's one, still it's not a problem, but when there's two, they can really stalk and, you know, um, pounce on each other and really see how close they can get without the other one noticing. Uh, you know, the stalking skills of uh, that individual. So, yes, very nice to have the two of them having to play around and enjoying each other's company. But, yeah, what a Sunday morning start to a beautiful sunrise safari. We've got uh, Columbus two cubs, we've got Lalanga. But uh, while these two are enjoying each other's company, let's head over to Pridelands with Chris and BK. I think they are also having a lot of fun together. Yeah, so we've got World Environment Day today. And for me, World Environment Day is all about symbiotic relationship you know being connected to the environment and that's something that's been a central sort of theme for my 
my own being during my guiding tenure, much like myself and BK. We've got this symbiotic relationship where we both mutually benefit from each other's skills. And what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna just walk around Red Earth. Love this particular area. So it, it, it just sort of appeals to me, but we're gonna be looking for symbiotic relationships. That's gonna be sort of like our little theme for the remainder of the morning. But first, we're gonna quickly go over to Rexon, who's got something interesting there. Welcome back to Chris, the World Environment Day this afternoon. Yes, of course, Chris. We find another leopard. We're not sure whether it's Marit, which leopard it is. We just want to take an, uh, a look from the distance and slowly approach this um, individual. Look like uh, a big cat. Huh? It might be just from the kill. I was just a little bit concerned if it's one of these skittish leopard, but it looked like not. It could be Marit. Yes. <laughs> Go a little bit forward and try to find it. Which one is this one? Wow! Lucky. Yo! This cat is bigger. I look like uh, it could be my ribs, but the look of the distance, I'm not sure. Anyone can able to identify this uh, uh, leopard, but uh, the way he looked like and uh, the movement of all leopards around in the area, I don't think it's Shasha. It, it, it could be Marit. If it happens that it's Shasha, it's unbelievable. It will be unbelievable. This is great, great day. I mean, it looked like a, a leopard day. Of course, uh, earlier on, uh, we had the cups, the lumber cups, and uh, we have langa, and now we have this uh, young male leopard. We are against the sign, a little bit difficult even from our point here to identify, but the look of the, the cat itself, it might be marid. If you look at the darker sort of a chain that uh, is really on the neck, Pretty much Marib's. Shasha. Wow. Well done. Look like Shasha. Let's try to stay with this uh, leopard. I don't know why both of them, they are coming together. He's just, he's coming right here, very close to us. Definitely, he might be coming in front of the vehicle. In a very few seconds, he's just behind the bushes, but it will be the great opportunity to wait until you get to, get so close. Look like they were on a kill. They might be, I've uh, killed something here yeah, in the course of a night, and now uh, hand his sister and now moving away from the spot. It looked like the male have left behind. We only have one Earth. This phrase highlights the challenges of collective action between nations. It emphasizes the great test of our time. Achieving environmental change cannot be met by countries acting alone. Head over to the Wild Earth Shop to buy your only One Earth merchandise and create awareness for global change this World Environment Day. The Safari Guide of the Year 2022 is approaching us rapidly. This year, we'll be heading to Bushwise Field Guides at the Southern African Wildlife College from the 27th June till the 2nd of July. We will soon meet all our contestants who are vying for the prize of being the very best of the best. And the judges, who put them through their paces. Join me, Steve Falkenbridge, as we dream it, guide it, win it. Wow, look at this. Wow, yes, oh look at the beautiful, he's 
beautiful cat. Huh? Unbelievable. I hope maybe. Try to reposition ourselves. Wow, of course, it might be really giving us a little bit of a moment on top of the Temat Mad where the light might be perfect for us from this direction. Wow. Unbelievable. He's looking intensively into the area where Langa might be. I'm checking up in a tree. She might be getting a scent here of a kill. She's inspecting trees, inspecting trees. Look at that, uh, he's more interested on in something across the road. What might be? Wow. He's trying to follow up and keep with this leopard. Look like he's interested on in something. Maybe just uh, get the scent that the sister she's here all oh, spotted something that we cannot see. A leopard eyes are so good. This is one of the species, of course. Look directly where the sister went. She is more like uh, now checking. If you might have an opportunity to find something here that uh, her sister might left in a surrounding. We don't see much of uh, animal movement in the area, but you know the leopard can even uh, smell and they can hear. Uh, look, his body language is telling us that uh, he's after something. Let me go a little bit. Uh, Let's try to avoid the sun from the other different direction, but of course, Shasha is up to something here. It could be her sister that uh, been there, but I don't think it will be uh, a big uh, hassle with their sister. They won't try to fight. It will be good for them to join, and they will separate. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. Are you a fan of the Juma clan? If the answer to this is yes, then you are cordially invited to our Hyena Hullabaloo starting on the 13th of June. During this week, we want to take a trip down memory lane. Please send in your favorite Juma clan moments to hyena at wildearth.tv by the 7th of June and we will dig into our archives and try our hardest to play it out during this week of hyena celebrations. Look, like her sister might be urinated on the ground and try to read the scent from the sister. Yes, of course, the leopard avoid inbreeding. Um, Shasha is not going to mate or not going to be interested mating with uh, Langa. It's just uh, at the moment, maybe say hello to one another and move different direction and practice to be solitary. Um, in this age, or this age, of course, they cannot stay together. They will move different location. Beautiful looking, 
both of these uh, uh, leopard, for me it's been long, I haven't seen them for ages, but now I'm glad because uh, I will manage to see both of them. Mlanga look like a little bit dark when it comes to the coat, a lot more visible dark color part of the skin itself is more obvious. It may be because he was moving or lying on top of the grass, um, maybe walking in the grass which is having dew and that if a leopard get wet, the dark color it will be more dominant dominated a lot because it might be wet. Unbelievable. I like the way uh, Shasha really used a tree to uh, look around. That it helps a lot, especially if there's any prey species around in the area. Looking directly to the prey species use the tree is how actually leopards and lions get close to all the prey species around in the surrounding. At the, at the moment it looked like uh, he's looking for um, a langa at the same time maybe establishing itself to hunt in the area let's link to cedric who does have a visual of uh, the, the lumber cups Yes, uh, wow, Langa and Sasha. Wow, wow, wow. There we go. There we go. As you can see, we've got the male cub of Langa still resting here on the termite mound, enjoying the sun, the early morning sun. I think he looks very grumpy at the moment, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks. Uh, Langa. No, so did I say Tlalamba? Sorry. Jeez. Yeah. I think I've got a la 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 lamba in my head here this morning because it's just, uh, it's been so amazing this morning. Uh, but yeah, Langa, thank you, Nadine. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, so Langa and Sasha. But yeah, we've got uh, Tlalamba's uh, young uh, male cub. He's just enjoying the early morning sun here. And I don't know, the sister is running around here She's somewhere in the background. Uh, she might even be on one of the other little uh, fallen over trees where you know there's one or two trees at the back uh, that we can't really get to see nicely but I'm um, sure she might be lying there, lying there. I can see he's almost falling asleep now I think the sun is so good and definitely got that real really got that all uh, tandy look you know that a half eye I'm like grumpy look to, to his face but I think due to this uh, lovely morning sun I think he's enjoying it this is amazing and now she's headed towards the elephants yeah here comes the male behind us this is the male lion coming over here he's got... the elephants have huddled up protect the young ones in the middle and he's going after that girl and they are the buffalo going after the lion and the lioness they're still going after them look at that guy charging hey it's scottish lauren as your underwater biologist we have a turtle so this is the knife symbol for a turtle. So today is not any ordinary day, it is World Ocean Day. Yeah, that, uh, that was my stomach growling. My stomach just made a huge growl. I thought, a oh, panda looked at me. <laughs> he just started laughing. <laughs> That's my stomach. That was my stomach growling. Anyway, while well, we sit here with uh, Lalamba's uh, male cub, I'm sure the female cubs are around the vicinity as well. Let's head over to Rex and with Langa. Welcome back from Cedric. <laughs> it is really, really interesting day today. Of course, with all these um, Sabagado cups that we've seen around in the area. 
It, it's unbelievable. It's uh, a, a day which, uh, of course, look like the leopards are all out at the same time. And look like this um, uh, Shasha, he's not sure exactly what he wants. He's now heading back to the uh, cut line. He might be looking for her sister, and he knows that uh, his sister not far from the point. It might be something that uh, it, it was happening for a night. They've been together in the same area and they've been hunted in the same area and benefit maybe from the same kill that's raising is now like uh, treading behind his sister it looks like she's been everywhere where the sister been in the area and try to uh, get loose it's it's really <laughs> The leopards, they can get together sometimes in numbers, especially if they're related. They can know that uh, that uh, this is her sister and it can know her mother and they can join together with the, uh, if uh, cause we have new cubs, it can direct this youngster in able to accommodate uh, giving the new cubs around in the area and be together with that uh, nothing that can disturb them in the area if they hunt they can be so much patient in order to move from one part to another to benefit what they need to benefit remember with the leopard they know that uh, it's so much dangerous for them if they can move in the area rush in particular areas more especially trailing one leopard to another it can be a very strong dominant male leopard here that also want to investigate for the young female at the same time you get to the point where the female it's even you are related you never know what might be around in that area and that might cause a very serious damage we know this uh, uh, young male father, but my Mulawati. Mulawati won't be having a problem to come across with Shasha unless if Shasha gets into area where it might be a cups for different females or from the same mother. It sometimes you find a dominant male will try to push the youngster away from the spot because in most cases the youngster need their own time and safety. If there's always a leopard or different leopard that goes into a particular area, it might uh, really attract hyenas and other species that are competing and the cubs won't be safe. I can hear the tree squirrel. If I really get it silent, you may be able to benefit that. Hello everyone from Sunny Namibia. My name is Cameron Pierce and this year I'll be representing Ongava Game Reserve at the Safari Guide of the Year 2022 edition. You know, a lot of people have asked me what it would be like to win the competition and it would obviously be an incredible privilege. But uh, even just to be selected as one of the five finalists is an honor that I, I never expected and special to be a part of it for this year. My name is Liam Henderson. I'm a guide at the Homestead Lodge on Nambiti Private Game Reserve in KwaZulu-Natal. I think Safari Guide of the Year is a great competition to be a part of. I'm somewhat nervous for the tracking part of the competition as being in KZN now, uh, I've been, haven't been exposed to the low felt animals and tracks and signs that are so apparent up there. The squirrel decided to move away and get more silent. Is that actually in nature, you, you can read what might be moving into the woodland or in the jungle. Of course, listening to squirrels, listening to francolins, listening to nimpala, listening to monkeys, they can tell you the present of uh, uh, danger as far as predators movement in, in the bush. So, it's that comes pass by on that area 
the war signal. Okay. Leopard is one of the species, especially moving in, in, in a wet patch or in the grasses where it's wet or even going in the mud where it's water. After a while, it will try to groom himself. I mean, try to limit all the bacteria and parasite, of course, as far as ticks, they can remove in the area where it's possible for them to take off by licking itself by the tongue. We'll be taking this opportunity from leopard to Chris on a bushwalk and see what it might be. Look at this. Now we've had this a number of times, but still amazing. So this is the communal web spider. Actually spiders. I'm trying to see if we can't see one. PK, here's one. You got one? Right, so this is a whole bunch of spiders living together. So they've got their communal living area. And then they usually have the communal hunting area where they have a web. So what basically happens here, you get a relationship of, or a grouping of these spiders. So they gregarious in a sense. Small spiders, but by having a communal living area, they can protect each other. They have a house where they live, but also the communal web area where they hunt. They can catch prey much larger than them. And as a group, they can then overpower prey that spiders would otherwise not be able to kill and feed upon. So this is not necessarily a symbiotic relationship. Remember we said we we're going to speak about symbiotic relationships. This is purely a grouping of animals, much like you'll have with a pride of lions for very much the same reason, safety and feeding purposes. Talking about symbiosis or symbiotic relationship, the word symbiosis. Before I get to that, there's a lovely comment from Salt and Pepper that's just commenting about the beautiful light and obviously BK's expert capture of it. Anyway, going back to symbiosis, symbiotic relationships, the word symbiosis, if you strip it down in Latin, it refers to simultaneous lives or living together. What it means is, we often just refer to symbiosis as people benefiting or animals benefiting from each other. Remember, there's a couple of different types of symbiosis. So we can strip symbiosis into different categories. So the most well-known or most talked about, I would say, is mutualism, is where two organisms have a relationship and they both benefit directly from the relationship itself. So that will be something like ox peckers on a buffalo. And in most cases, both species need each other in order to survive. So the relationship has to exist for both species. Um, a classic example of that would be fig wasps and fig fruits. My name is Nico Britz. I am originally from Cape Town. I worked in the Eastern Cape for about nine years before I started working at Bushwise Field Guides in the Low Felt. Uh, close to Makalali Private Game Reserve. So I'm hoping that by doing this, this could inspire the younger or newer guides coming into the industry to do the same. Hello everyone, my name is Ruan Grobler. I'm from Lion Sands Game Reserve and being nominated for the Safari Guide of the Year came as somewhat of a surprise to me. I was very excited and quite nervous as well in the beginning uh, to tackle this task. 
but it's 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 quite a prestigious event and it, it means that you are recognized and I'm quite happy to be recognized. It means quite a lot to me. So that is commensalism. Where one party benefits, the other one is not influenced at all. The third category would be parasitism, where one party directly benefits from the association or relationship and the other party or organism is harmed by the relationship. And this is different to predation. This is not where something kills something to eat. Predation is something totally different. This would be something like a tick or a virus or a bacteria that causes a disease. That is a parasite that harms something. And often you'll find that they do not kill their host or not supposed to, the intention is not to kill their host. They need their host for the relationship to survive. There's one other category before we head over to Cedric called antibiosis. And this is very prominent with certain plants that releases toxins into the soil in order to prevent other plants from growing around it, causing it to dominate a certain area. A fourth category as well called antibiosis. Right, that is my lesson for today. Let's head over to Cedric to see what he's up to. Yes, uh, <coughs> sorry, I'm still sitting there with uh, the Lumbers uh, cubs. Saw the male cub on the termite mound, still just. Uh, giving us a beautiful little stare. Um, while we're sitting here, we've got a uh, kudu alarm calling maybe towards uh, oh, Twin Dams Road. I'm just trying to figure out where exactly. Twin Dams Road, maybe Leopard, uh, Ingwe Alley. Uh, that area there is definitely a, a kudu alarm calling. And I know when a kudu alarm calls, does that barking noise, it is definitely something in the vicinity. It's not like impala or squirrels and franklins. They can be alarming, but they don't know what they're looking at. If it's a kudu or niala or bushbuck, then you definitely know there is something in the vicinity. I just want to listen out again. I just want to see, get the exact direction. Maybe Chalapan. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Ingwe Alley, uh, Twin Dams Road. There is something there. Maybe it is for, maybe it's Lalamba. I'm sure it might be for her that's coming this side, so I'm hoping so. If it is the case, you will be here very shortly. And uh, I'm hoping that and we get all three of them together. But definitely, as you can see, the male cub is not bothered. Cole, good morning, good morning. How does uh, the cubs tell the mother says, uh, come and stay? A little contact, a little vocalization by the mom. A little bit of a huff and a puff, like, <laughs> or uh, like, like little contact callings and all that. So just to maybe say, stay or come or go. Um, also body uh, gestures as well. So as a body gestures from a mom. So sometimes the mom will move off a little bit and the cub will try and follow and she'll snarl at the cubs and say like, you know, stay, remain. Um, so there's little body gestures, little, uh, little vocals around. So yeah, they all know very quickly. It's amazing and how quickly they... Sorry, this is radio. My radio! Off. The radio off. But yes, uh, Cole, thank you very much for your question this morning and thank you for joining us on our stunning sunrise drive. My name is Solomon Lobu. I am working at Singita Kruger National Park. I am very excited today to be one of the guys that have been nominated to selected to participate in the Safari Guide of the Year. I am an activator. Uh, I like starting something, motivating others to become better. I am positive. Uh, I like to um, focus on the positive side of the situation.
Mm, little male cubs just listening out. Well, with the male cubs now, when it comes to male and female cubs with uh, with their mothers, um, you'll find that the male cubs, they'll start becoming independent at uh, leaving the mom's side for at about a year and eight months, year and nine months, and you'll find, if, you'll find that a female cub will remain for about a year and five, year and six months. So female, females, uh, if it's a daughter and mother, uh, they'll tend to apart much quicker because it's two females. But if it's a son and a mother, the son is already much bigger, than, well, not much bigger, but bigger than the mom at the year and a half. So she feels intimidated by his size. So unfortunately, then the male leopard, the father, will have to push the son out of the area. But anyway, while we sit here, let's head over to Rexon. I think he, he's still with uh, Lange and Sasha, or it was one of them. Or well, maybe it was both. Welcome back uh, from Cedric. We are uh, Shasha here. He is moving uh, parallel with the drainage line at the moment. We'll try to stay with these uh, uh, young male leopard in the area and see where he's going to take us to. A little bit uh, thick here, but uh, we, we can manage to stay with the leopard. And it looks like he's now on a trail of. Uh, the animals here, maybe it being a grey decker or impala, who knows, in the area. Look like Eleon was a lot more interested checking in this particular area. A leopard by choice, of course, and also uh, due to the competition, a leopard can switch during the night and hunt in the course of a day. So it's one of the things that uh, it looks like it's happening here. Um, Shasha is moving in the area, hunting at the moment. Let's see what is going to fall. Oh, another leopard. Who's this? I haven't seen this before. Two male leopard. The other one is slightly bigger. What's going on here? Let me see. Whoa. It could be the brother and sister. It's longer. <laughs> wow. Like what I was saying earlier on, it will be just hello to the brother and uh, keep moving. So being both uh, of them together here, yeah, they still know one another. That's, uh, they are sisters, so they are related. In nature, you know, leopards practice to be more territory, but this is um, something that uh, we are learning from these two. They, they're independent from their mother at the moment, but still joining one another and still accepting one another. They're more happy to be joining as brothers and sisters. Wow, unbelievable. This is something that, uh, of course, we, we are learning in a daily basis, practical from all these animals. There's reason we all really love. It becomes leopard that uh, always in the area. It becomes our teachers. There's reason we all love this leopard. Yes, of course, Rosemary. It is indeed. Let me try to go a little bit forward. The benefit of the camera. Unbelievable. Langa is continuously moving. Where, I mean, Shasha continues moving. Langa is lying down. Uh, it's really, really unexpected to be seen like this. It's unbelievable. The two of them, when they get here, they were greeting like uh, they're really still young cubs that. Uh, they can still depend from the mother. You know that this is magic. They are nearly, uh, August they will be uh, three years old, both of them. Once they get to three years is when they start to really move completely away from the spot, from one another. Already they have done that.
The Safari Guide of the Year 2022 is approaching us rapidly. This year, we'll be heading to Bushwise Field Guides at the Southern African Wildlife College from the 27th June till the 2nd of July. We will soon meet all our contestants who are vying for the prize of being the very best of the best. And the judges who will put them through their paces. Join me, Steve Falkenbridge, as we dream it, guide it, win it. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel. I believe one of these uh, sub-adult male, if you do have make a kill, they're still gonna join together because you can see that uh, we have witnessed they all joins together and there was no problem at all. So that tells you that uh, they can still uh, benefit one another. If one kills, make a kill, the other one still can join on the kill, easy on that way. And the female, the young female here, look like uh, at the moment, she's just relaxing and looking directly where the bride is going. They might be still try to trace one another, follow one another, be in the same area for a little bit longer around an area. If anything happen, both of them, they can benefit from one another, which is a great thing to learn as from today. I mean, leopard is a very special animal out here. It's so special where you cannot get even tired seeing leopard in a daily basis because leopard, finding leopard is not easy. And also every time when you get to see leopard, we as a guide, we are learning in a daily basis with these uh, uh, animal behavior or leopard behavior in general. Amazing, if a leopard is still hunting this time of a day, moving, looking for opportunity to make a kill, that tells you time and again. In so yeah, I wanted to see this leopard for a long time. And of course, uh, we are lucky seeing both of them at the same time. Uh, Langa and Shasha at the same time. Just amazing. And that tells you uh, leopards in the area, it's increasing, but especially crossing into this uh, Juma Conservancy. Both uh, young males, it looked like they spend time in the area without uh, really seeing them. In the area where the eye is a little bit difficult to really follow up. But for me, I'm a lot more happy if we see Columbus Cup, Shasha and Langa. It will be amazing. We know that one day in future, Shasha will be no longer active in the area. He's, he is going to move completely away where we might see uh, Langa come and again in the same area where she might be moving. Because this is look like it's the area where she might operate time and again unless if the lamba really pushes this young leopard away from the spot then it will be something else but look at the um, territory of the lamba is such a huge territory it goes up to the east in furthermore to the north soon the cubs goes bigger enough in order to a mother left them for a day or two is where you can see the lamba she might be cross over even further to the north and to hunt in those particular areas and extend of course the area for the cubs in order to Let's take this opportunity and go over to Cedric with the Lumbus Cups. <coughs> yeah, I think uh, definitely see now the little one is starting to hear something. Maybe it could be, remember we heard that uh, could your alarm calling just now? And I think maybe mommy's on his way uh, to 
this space, yeah. Let's just, just go around the other side. Maybe Tlama might be coming in. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so because that seems uh, where she, the kudus were alarm calling early. Now the club definitely took notice of uh, like of something that side. So we're just gonna shoot around just to just to the junction and uh, let's see what they heard there. I want to see where is that little one now. Yeah, it's gone already. Yeah, I think it's a happy. Or maybe it's from towards. Maybe mommy's here. Maybe our number has arrived. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. It's just going to wait a bit here. Yeah? Uh, I don't know see where the cover is. Um, just take a look. I'm just going to park just here and then listen out. I think that the, uh, he's already run across the road. I think he's happy about something uh is there. if you are a wild earth explorer we have exciting news for you the winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of explorer merchandise like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colors a very useful tote bag or even a cap for those in the southern hemisphere that's heading into winter a sweatshirt to keep you warm head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. All things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful. Wild Earth will see it all. Each little flower that opens. Each river that does flow. Join us to celebrate World Environment Day for a very special safari show. Definitely, uh, definitely a good, a good leopard morning. Definitely quite an influx of leopards this morning coming through into Juma Private Game Reserve, which is really fantastic. Well, uh, Tlumba's two cubs, and I'm hoping Tlumba will join up here just now. And of course, we've got Langa and Sasha, a good old re reunite. Ex Ranga, good morning. Um, okay, my, my record was uh, when I was still working at Nkoro, yeah, in the northern Sabi Sands, when I went uh, onto a property called Arethusa, and I got eight leopards in a two kilometer radius in uh, one drive. I was very fortunate. Yes, it was a female, and I said, like, just like this, two cubs are not with her, but uh, in another spot. And I can't remember, this was uh, Shadow. Got Mvula, Shadow Mvula, um, another female called Mbilu, and uh, Nialeti. I think, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think, figure out who all those leopards were there at that time. But uh, yes, so it was quite a few, um, but it was definitely uh, my record. So yeah, but, but in a complete drive, I think that was still my record. I think I haven't had more than that. But yes, ex -ranger. But uh, in one sighting, I also had uh, my, in one sighting, I had Mishu, I had Induna, I had Karula, I had Jordan, I had uh, uh, Shavambalan and Shavinzi. So I had six leopards in a sighting once as well, uh, many moons back as well, yeah, at uh, Juma Private Game Reserve. Uh, I was very fortunate to have six leopards in one sighting. So we definitely had a leap of leopards, We're very fortunate for that. But... Uh, yeah, this shows you. Uh, leopards everywhere. I think went to the back. Yeah. I think that little one went to the back. And, uh, yeah. Uh, the, uh, just want to take a look. I'm just going to hold back a bit, yeah. I just want to see if uh, I might just drop into the drainage line towards uh, Giraffe Crossing. I just want to see what the little one did here. Yeah. I think he's moved off into the into the drainage. Maybe it picked up on another noise there. So, But we're just holding back a little bit, yeah, and to see where he is off to. Anyway, while 
we continue looking around here, let's head over to Chris in Pridelands to see how many leopards he has seen in one drive. Oh, good luck, Cedric. I think you're becoming greedy there with all the leopards you find. Now, Cedric's asked how many leopards have I seen in one game drive or drive. You can recall my last shift at Juma. We had, I think it was Tandy, bless the soul, Marips, and there was another leopard. I can't remember who it was. Remember in the Mawati drainage, we had it in the morning. That was three in one sighting. Um, my record, if I can put it that way, not that it's a competition or anything. And it was in fact Lunga thinking about it it was longer yes 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 anyway so um my record for one drive was eight leopards in one drive okay i have to admit two of the sightings was females with cubs so you know my most leopards that i've seen in one sighting was five and that was in the timbavati in 2004-ish, I was up at uh, the northern parts of the Timbavati, I think I was at Motswari, or somewhere there, and uh, we had five leopards in one sighting. Female with three cubs, a male and another female. And that's the Sabi Sand for you. It's really an amazing spot for leopards. Pridelands, on the other hand, you know, I've had two leopard sightings for the entire five weeks that I've been here. And I kind of like it. There's a lot of leopard out here, but they're not as habituated yet. So it's going to be a process to, to, to get them where, for instance, the Dimavati, the Sabi Sand, those areas are at. And I kind of like, like being part of that. You know, and, and oh goodness, it's a, in order to play a small but significant part. We want to hear from our Wild Earth Kids this World Environment Day. You are the future protectors of our planet and we want to help you understand what needs to be preserved. We saw a termite mound. We got to see a lot of unique animals. Some trees are male and female. That's pretty cool, right? A whole lot of different creatures. It was amazing that we could ask questions. Kids, send in your questions for our special World Environment Day Safari on June the 5th. It was so cool! As our global Wild Earth family grows, we know that many of you struggle to get your questions answered during the live safari. Going forward, we will be holding AMAs for our Wild Earth explorers on a regular basis. The first is with our resident leopard whisperer, Tristan Dix. Join me for an AMA on the 8th of June, straight after the Sunset Safari. This will be your chance to ask me anything you like. All you have to do is sign up to be an explorer, and you can meet me here on Juma with your questions ready. But we've not actually found any tracks to track. But you know what? Just being out here, even if there's no animals or anything like that, it's still awesome just to, you know, connect to the place and location and so forth. An amazing experience in its own. It's amazing that uh, I was just talking about Langa. Phenomenal leopard, absolutely love her. But let's go back to Rexon to see what Langa is up to. Welcome back from Chris uh, in Pride Land. We are back uh, here with Langa 
the winter season have started, Juma. Uh, if you look at the um, leopard uh, that uh, today we have uh, really seen around in the area, it could be more leopard that is going to come out. It depends how many vehicles that are out looking for leopards around in the area. I believe that uh, even Kalamba, she's going to rock up with the cubs, or she might be not far from the cubs. The kudu and lambing, that means if there was an, uh, I mean, standby vehicle very really close to the cubs, they will go and investigate. It looks like all oh, the leopard comes out. It's in the nature of the area. In winter, in science here at Juma, you tend to see more leopard in a day. If I recall very well in the area, once before in winter season, you can able to see from 8 to 11 leopards around in the area. If we are looking and we are going and more interested um, to find what might be around, especially if there's a lamb call. The reason behind that um, for the migration of the species, they move in particular areas due to water source that makes also the leopard uh, move quite a lot in, in the surrounding. Of course, some of the um, lion by this time that might be moving away from different area, knowing that the benefit, if you look at the area here, the most attraction area for big animals, it's all about the water source, river, permanent river, big lakes so for the water where you find that uh, animal will move in and out. If you look at uh, not far from here, we have Chita Chita waterhole, which will attract more species in and out in the area, drinking and moving in the land where they might graze. And that, it can attract more leopards and lions, hyena, wild dogs, to be in the area. One thing that we have experienced for many years, and we all know that uh, soon the leopard, the lion comes into the area, the leopard will move out of that particular area. Now it tells that uh, the lion might be not far from the particular area where the uh, leopard have moved in switch into the area. Earlier on, we were just, I mean, lucky come across with the game drive vehicle. They were tracking male lion tracks that are headed towards the Chita Chita Dam. That means these uh, animals, they're not going to enjoy that particular area because there is a male lion in that particular area. They move more of them into the north. It helps quite a lot to avoid one another like that way. And it makes life easy for ourselves to find more leopard. But you need to know where's the leopard and which area to focus. It helps a lot to find more like a leopard because they're always avoiding lions like that way. And I believe in the next um, few uh, weeks, they will be busy around in the era, more especially the wild dogs. To celebrate World Oceans Day and create awareness for the role that the oceans play in everyday life, Wild Earth has some brand new Dive Live merchandise in our shop. T-shirts, sweatshirts, bags and even caps. So take the plunge, head over to our shop and see what you can find. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. We only have one Earth. This phrase highlights the challenges of collective action between nations. It emphasizes the great test of our time. Achieving environmental change cannot be met by countries acting alone. Head over to the Wild Earth Shop to buy your only One Earth merchandise and create awareness for global change this World Environment Day. Finger crossed to uh, Malanga to stay in the area. Yes, as the Shasha move uh, slightly to the north, look like uh, Shasha is hunting and leave uh, Langa uh, behind. If he make a kill, he knows that the sister is in the area, he might come back. It's in the nature of a leopard, he might come back, maybe join the sister. If he doesn't proceed, head more far away from her. If we make a kill close by and uh, Langa able to 
here that he removed directly towards his brother and joined the kill. This is how actually leopard works. And they can really share from the kill itself. Although it uh, sometimes shows a little bit of aggression, but it's not something that can hurt one another. It's just uh, to be practicing more solitary. So completely I've moved to a little bit to the north, deeply into the property of Juma, uh, towards um, uh, Lidwood Road. Maybe during the course of uh, afternoon, the best area to check is Mamba, Lidwood Road, Drunkersbeck Drive, on those areas who might be able to really good, but Langa decided to lie down. It's in the nature of a leopard. And most of the time, during the course of a the night, they spend their time hunting. You might find that uh, it's what happened quite a lot to uh, Langa here. She was hunting at night, and now she's trying to settle down and relax, not to move quite a lot. Where Langa, she, I mean Shasha, try to be even now getting more active. More especially if they move in the area or hunt in the area knowing that uh, it's quite more uh, hyena that they can really disturb on hunting or interact. They tend to be not uh, get active as much in the course of a night. Unless if it's an opportunity created by a prey species, they will take it. You know that the leopard would like to kill something in an area like this with quite a lot of competition that they can manage to take up into the tree. In this size of uh, a leopard, uh, a langa in front of us here. Let's take this opportunity and see if Cedric is having any luck vis of the lumber cups. Yes, i uh, still got a very sleepy Tlalamba's male cub. <laughs> he wants to pass out and he wakes up. And he wants to fall asleep and he wakes up. And <laughs> I think he's definitely enjoying his Sunday morning nap here. Um, yeah, I'm still waiting. And just as I said, I did hear those kudus earlier. So I'm hoping that she will still maybe pop up here on old Tlalamba. It'll be very nice. Um, the female cub is somewhere as well. We did hear a little bit of rustling just uh, south of, or just east of from uh, where this male cub is lying. I think she might be lying down somewhere not too far from him. But yeah, they are coming out of pretty much about eight months now. So they were born around about uh, September, October last year. So that does make them pretty much eight months old. So they are getting nice and big and... Uh, they are really growing very quickly. I think every single time we see them, they definitely have put on a few more kilograms. And uh, one day this big boy, he's going to be around about uh, I'd say 80 to 85 kgs. That's usually the male's weight, maximum weight. And of course his sister, she'll get to about 40, 45 kgs. So the female is usually half the size of the male and he's going to have one day he's going to have a big head a dewlap and uh, he's going to have a territory of his own but for now I don't think he's thinking too much about that at all I think he's just worried about uh, putting some food in his tummy Yeah, okay, Craig, good morning. Uh, it is uh, the discretion and all that, and we really kind of make sure that uh, we do not interfere too much. Um, so like, for instance, here yeah, with the Columbus Cubs, we will only put one vehicle in a sighting. We will not go off-roading. And so like where we are now, we're not even close to him because of our camera, the strength of our camera. We are fortunate enough to make it look like we are right there on top of him. But we are a good maybe, I'll say 40, 40 meters, uh, Panda. Yeah, let me see, look how, look, look how far we, look at that. That's how far we are from that cub. And just shows you, so we don't go right on top of him. Um, but if it's uh, other leopards, older ones, and they are very used to the vehicles, um, they don't. Uh, they get. They see us as a, a non-aggressive object. You'll find some of the leopards will actually walk right up to the vehicles, and even send mark against the tires if they have to. I've had it a few times, and uh, they become very kind of uh, 
uh, relaxed with vehicles around. But if there is a leopard that is very skittish, you can always take a look at the behavior. If you look at the behavior of uh, leopard or lions or wild dogs or any 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 animal really, um, if you look at the behavior and you see that they they're not happy and you actually altering their behavior, as soon as you alter their behavior, that is where the problem comes in because that's what we do not want to do. We want to keep them pretty much as a normal behavior and keep that distance if there is any uh, situation where that animal is not relaxed. I'd rather keep that uh, that distance then so you're not on top of them. So yes, Craig, it is uh, very important for us, I think, uh, especially like a day like today, it is World Environmental Day where there is so much that we want to give back as well to nature and, uh, and make sure that uh, we have uh, animals that... Uh, that's uh, not stressed due to a uh, human interaction. Are you a fan of the Juma clan? If the answer to this is yes, then you are cordially invited to our Hyena Halabaloo starting on the 13th of June. During this week, we want to take a trip down memory lane. Please send in your favorite Juma clan moments to hahina at wildearth.tv by the 7th of June and we will dig into our archives and try our hardest to play it out during this week of hahina celebrations. Find a way into, into the kill to eat, get their fill in there as well. But they're also going to be told off. See, it's, lions are not great at sharing their <laughs> Okay, guys. Let me just take in frustration out on the other lion, but you see, it was interesting. He doesn't know what to do with himself. He's lying down and he's up and he's listening. Then he goes on top and he listens again. So he, <laughs> he doesn't know. And my stomach was grumbling early on as well. No, I think he wants to maybe go to his sister. Maybe she's maybe the way he's going. Oh, he looks like he's coming out the side. I'm sniffing around there. Well, he's, he's stalking something. Is he? Mm. Laying here, maybe he's stalking a grasshopper. I just see his little white fluffy tail, the tip of his tail there. Unfortunately, I've seen many a time with uh, leopards actually stalking something and. Uh, You'll find that their tails or that little tip will go from side to side, almost like a worm. And that's when they, of course, they're putting a lot of concentration on whatever they are doing. And sometimes that little white tip can give their location away on, uh, on stalking a, a prey species. Ooh, let's head over to Prylands. Uh, with old Chris and BK, I think he's got some spots of his own. A couple of young giraffes here. Yeah. I think they're on the way to Leopard Dam. We, we, we just due west of, of the dam itself. It'd be amazing if we can somehow set up a bit of a session with giraffe drinking. I mean, after the bit of a love story we had yesterday with the giraffe, nice to just see them having a drink. Definitely a couple of young ones. There's one or two adult females amongst this group. I must say, I'm quite, I won't say surprised, but it, it's something I noted here at Pride Lens, is that the giraffe population here has much higher density 
than a lot of other areas I've seen in the greater Kruger. There seems to be a really high density of giraffe here. Possible explanation is the terrain. Lots of thorn trees, especially big knob thorns, quite a lot of them. So it's definitely a food related issue here. Habitat. Oh, there's some zebra as well. Nathan, hi there. Nathan says hello, camel halls. And actually, our Afrikaans name for this animal, Camille Pert, translates exactly into that camel horse. Although, the Latin for it, giraffe, or yeah, giraffe camelopardalis, actually the camelopardalis refers to camel leopard, or camel like a leopard. This morning we were driving and suddenly we heard a lot of commotion. I think the wild dogs might have caught an impala then, or the leopard might have caught the impala, and as it was dragging it, the wild dog saw it, started chasing the leopard up into the tree, and then the hyenas came to steal it. But, uh, what an incredible sighting. The Safari Guide of the Year 2022 is approaching us rapidly. This year, we'll be heading to Bushwa's Field Guides at the Southern African Wildlife College from the 27th June till the 2nd of July. We will soon meet all our contestants who are vying for the prize of being the very best of the best. And the judges who will put them through their paces. Join me, Steve Falkenbridge, as we dream it, guide it, win it. It's a very <laughs> off sounding grey go way bird in that tree there. So sort of like a half hearted attempt at making an alarm call. Anyway, we're back on the vehicle at the moment. We're actually planning to just go to a slightly different area to scout around what we can find. So we're not doing a full-fledged bushwalk this morning. It's merely area hopping, if you can put it that way. While we transit to another area to go and explore a little bit, let's go back to Rex and Timani with a very sleepy Langa. Welcome back, uh, Chris. Indeed, uh, Langa is now sleeping, decided uh, not, not to move. It's such amazing uh, how actually 
these two get together here and the other one you just move uh, slightly to the north it look like it's still a little bit active we can hear now and then vehicle moving but at the moment it looked like both of them the much settle stationary not to move that much not to hunt around the area the area one i was just talking to her that it can be something good if um Sibui, maybe uh, down south where he might be south of Chitichitua, if he does mate it with the new male, it could be the pressure that these two young male, two young uh, cubs push into the area. And it will be good news because they cannot stay in the area of um, a mother, especially if they mated with the new male. That means they have to move into Molowati's territory in order to be protected. Otherwise, it won't be safe if they stay in the new area where the new dominant male have taken over from the female, it becomes a little bit uh, more problem for the sub adult. We have seen quite a lot of behavior of uh, dominant male killing sub adult uh, uh, leopards around the area. We have learned from Tingana quite a lot when the youngster. Uh, like in the age of uh, Langa and Shasha, stay in an area where the dominant male have just recently taken over. They become more more uh, uh, dangerous for them not to move out of that area. So they have to stay in the area of the dominant male that fathered them. And in the age of this um, uh, female that we're looking here, uh, Langa, they can hunt something from 10 kg up to 50 kg easily and take it up into the tree. They're no longer cubs, they are sub adults. They can hunt themselves, they can be move out from the area from one part to another. We have seen quite a lot um, of young males taking dominance in the early stage, like uh, Shasha, what we see here, Suri Rich. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose. In that tree are two carcasses. There's a diker carcass and a water buck. Oh, it's not as graceful as... <laughs> He's a bit hesitant because, well, climbing a tree is not the easiest, but he will get up there eventually. So let's see, there he goes. Look at the power in that. That is a massive 500 pound cat that has just climbed a marula tree and is up in there. How cool is this? I don't know how he's going to do it, but let's see. I will be more interested again to see with Shasha what's going to happen. Maribs also what's going to uh, happen to these uh, cubs and uh, more uh, young leopards that in the area, even Kuchava's cubs that are roaming around in the area and where they're going to end. Most of them, young males, they might move completely out of the area, maybe north to the east, but it would be very nice to follow up a leopard that grows up in the area and know where he starts to really challenge, like uh, what happened to Tamba and Osana that challenge furthermore, almost in the same area down to the south southwest corner of our property. They become dominant on that area and they were very close sharing boundary and they will come from almost in the same area. So I believe with Shasha, or I mean uh, Shasha, Mar Mariz, and uh, the other young leopard, if it do happen that uh, they will move in the area, they might go in the same direction, maybe settle down there. It's in, indeed with the leopard, even if they're still young, what happened that uh, there can be a leopard that grew up in that particular area, but always from the female's kingdom, they always accept the new blood that doesn't really um, relate it with the bloodline leopard of that particular area. So we may get surprised quite a lot if a leopard 
property moves here and goes to the new area and it becomes more dominant. It's in the nature of this uh, animal. In most cases, they will be really accepting your blood. Same as uh, Talamba. Next season, if Mulawat is not strong enough, Talamba will accept the new blood to change the blood circulation into the... Um, the future generation of leopards in the area and accept a new male to mate, which it will be nice. All those cubs from uh, Talamba also, most especially the young male, might go somewhere else and um, really spread out the gene pool with different uh, blood, then it makes the cubs more healthy. If you look at Shasha, most especially right here, it's really, even in this age, it's not yet reached the uh, three years or sexual maturity, but the uh, general appearance of the leopard or the body is really intimidating. You can see that uh, in future is going to be a big leopard. The reason behind that, because Mulawati is coming from way to the north, from Thunderbush area and sat here and met with this female, it's a new blood that encourage the gene pool to be healthy and more stronger. As raising all the time, even people who know breeding quite a lot, they will change the breed of males to make sure that uh, the offspring has to be so much healthier and strong. So I believe that uh, the female may be going to stay and accept the new blood in the area. We are looking forward in a very short time, maybe a year, less than a year and a half, we might get to see um, a Langa's cups around in the area. Uh, cross fingers that uh, all these females that uh, if they can give birth for females, Let's cut to Cedric uh, and uh, see if he's managed to find the Lambus Cups again. Yes, we're still sitting ahead oh, of course the uh, Lambus male cub is fast asleep on this Termont Mount. He is passed out. <laughs> he's in La La Land but I think well look Molawati I mean I've seen uh, Molawati I had a brief visual of Molawati once the phantom of course that's the father of uh, these cubs and um, I'm not too sure you know I, is he big is he small is Molawati a, a big you know a big male I'm he is a big male, but is he really that big? I'm not too sure. Uh, Columba is a beautiful female. She is a nice size. And um, I think this little male cub will be a big boy. I think he's going to grow up to uh, become a, a handsome male. So, yes. I don't think he's going to be too small. The uh, male that we knew was Kushava, not Kushava, not this female Kushava that we all know of, Tandy's cub. There's another young male called Kishava in the western sector of the Sabi Sands, and uh, his mom's name was Hlabakunzi. Now, Hlabakunzi uh, is uh, the mother of also a female called Scotia. Now, anyway, now Hlabakunzi, uh, when Shikava was uh, around about just under a year old, Hlabakunzi was killed by the Birmingham males uh, in the western sector. And when that happens, I think it was the Birmingham. It was the Birmingham. I might be mistaken. Sorry, I might be mistaken because there's a lot of information now that I'm trying to run through. But he was, she was killed by male lions. And uh, um, Kashava then, of course, was left without a mother. And, uh, of course, he did not get that amount of food. Like, usually mothers will hunt and, you know, get the cubs to the kill and all that. Now, of course, Kishaba was still so young that his hunting skills wasn't so great at that point of time. And, of course, he, what happened, he started eating smaller things like, you know, lizards, squirrels. He survived on a really a bare minimum and he, didn't, uh, he was a little bit uh, undernourished. And due to that... Um, when I saw him last year in the Western sector at about three years old, three, three and a half years old, he was a male that looked like he was about two years old. Uh, he was really small, small in status, uh, status and uh, he just didn't have that huge male uh, body uh, like other males. And uh, fortunately, that's what happens when they do not get that, that amount of food in them. And, uh, yeah, of course, they grow much slower, much smaller. And, 
well, of course, this young male of uh, the Lamba, he's definitely had a lot of food, so I'm thinking he'll become a good and big male. Well, you can see the hyenas are far more tolerant of vultures than a lion or leopard would be. Occasionally a hyena will bite sort of a couple of tail feathers out of the back of a vulture, but I've never actually seen them, even once they've caught one, um, actually kill it. Oh, there we go, nearly got him. Hyena and hippo walking side by side, terror etched on the expression of little hippo. Look at this last mad dash, hyena running along beside it. Maybe hippo jaws gaping, it's gonna make it. It's gonna make it. It did it. The baby hippo against all odds. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just watching how this little male cub, he is so fast asleep. He's, uh, he's going into little dreams at the moment. Now and again, those little whiskers and uh, that lip of his is moving up and down. And those eyes are... Shut, shut. I think him and his sister must have had a huge party last night without mom being around. Mm hmm Yes. And now all of a sudden he's catching up on, on some rest. But they are really nocturnal, so I'm sure that the two of them were playing quite a bit last night in this drainage line. That's why he is so, so tired at this point in time. I think his sister's sleeping somewhere else. Yeah, just uh, behind him. Can't see her. Uh, just, see, just see him at the moment. I thought La Lama, I heard those kudus alarm call. I really was hoping, but it, I'm sure there was something that, that uh, walked past not too far. Uh, we are now west of us, and maybe towards Twin Dams Road. So you'll never know. Maybe it might be his mom still busy hunting, looking around for something to catch. But uh, even could be even be Molawati as well. You know, Molawati was seen here in the last uh, day or two. So you never know. Maybe it is even the father that might be just moving around here. Kathy Lee, yeah, thank you so much for joining us once again yeah, on our Sunrise Safari on Wild Earth. Uh, yes, Kathy Lee, I think, well, uh, she is uh, the shy one out of the two, uh, the young female leopard. And um, But you must remember, I remember when Tingana uh, made his way uh, into this area, uh, I think it was in 2014, 2015. In his first appearance here, yeah, can't remember some time that uh, yeah, during that period, and uh, when he came into this area, Tingana was practically almost the same. Tingana, you would see him; he would not even remain close by. He would just uh, sneak off all the time, and well, eventually Tingana became Tingana. He did not really care about anything and anybody and any vehicles. So. You know, they might start off like that, um, but you'll see very quickly uh, the demeanor does uh, change and they start thinking, okay, well, we'll just actually, you know, accept what's uh, happening around us and uh, continue. So as long as we are playing safe with it, that's the main thing. As long as we take notice of those things, that is what uh, counts. And uh, that's why it's always a good thing just to rather, you know, Make sure that you know their behavior. But yeah, Kathleen, I hope not. I'm sure she'll turn out to be a fantastic female. I mean, safari. So that is actually, if you think about safari, safari, safari is this little cub's great, great, great grandmother. Because otherwise, it's Karula, 
Tandi, Tlamba, and then others female. So Safari used to be the most relaxed female ever. She would actually use the vehicles at night time to stalk. So every time, if, if you see Impalas in front and they find Safari, uh, you usually have to turn your vehicle off and then she'll go lie flat or she'll quickly crawl up to your side of your tire or something. And if you turn your you turn on your vehicle to pull out of the pull out of the sighting for another vehicle to come in, she'll use that moment to muffle her own noise to get closer to the impala. So you have to turn off again, and then she'll go flat. And as soon as the vehicle's engine goes on again, she'll quickly, quickly get closer to the impala. And then as soon as the vehicle goes uh, turns off, she'll go flat again. So yeah, you know, taking uh, taking this uh, cubs uh, female cubs uh, great 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 grandmother's. Uh, um, behavior and character, well, uh, well, if it does happen that way, then it definitely will have a fantastic female that uh, knows how to use vehicles. But it does happen that they start adapting themselves on doing those kind of things. So, yeah, uh, old Safari, good old female back in the days. If you are a wild earth explorer, we have exciting news for you. The winner of this month's prize giveaway will win a hamper full of Explorer merchandise. Like this fantastic t-shirt that comes in plenty of great colours, a very useful tote bag or even a cap. For those in the Southern Hemisphere that's heading into winter, a sweatshirt to keep you warm. Head over to the Wild Earth Explorers page. Sign up to be a Wild Earth Explorer and you could win all of these goodies. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. All things bright and beautiful. All creatures great and small. All things wise and wonderful. Wild Earth will see it all. Each little flower that opens. Each river that does flow. Join us to celebrate World Environment Day. For a very special safari show. And doesn't it seem like this morning that we are busy babysitting here? <laughs> it feels like it, eh? <laughs> A little babysitting Columbus, uh cubs here uh, for the morning. Can't ask for better. But yes, yeah, good old to see Alanga and Alanga and uh, Sasha as well ending up together. What a what a fantastic sighting! I think I've seen Sasha once. It was right in the beginning, my stint here. And uh, yeah, just uh, seen him once, but a brief visual of him as well. But if such is coming out to three years old, so he should be bigger than Marips. I think he is bigger than Marips. Yeah, I think Marips is still, of course, he's still just, uh, I think he's two or just over two. So yeah, a lot of male cubs around. And I'm sure this boy's got uh, some growing as well and he's going to be here for some time so he's definitely going to be around for a long time for us to enjoy his uh, presence but uh, yes while we were watching uh, this young male leopard cub still resting on the tumult mound let's head over to chris while he's at leopard dam As expected, our giraffes made their way to the dam. They've not come to drink yet. They seem to be focused more on feeding and generally just being giraffes. This one's ruminating, so it's not actually eating at the moment. So it's chewing the cud. Remember, giraffes are also ruminants, just like cows. They do have a four-chambered stomach. Ruminants, which is the appropriate term for it. And they are close relatives of antelopes. I mean, they are in their own family, the Giraffidae, which includes them and the Okapi, which is found in Central Africa. The only species or members of that family, or not actually family, sub-family, but uh, family, actually, Chirophidae. But grouped together with antelope, goats, deer, 
all the four chambered stomach animals in the broader order, Ruminantia, which is the split hoofed animals that ruminate or chew the cud. And they further divide it into more families, which is the Cervidae, which is all the deer and deer like creatures, the Bovidae, which is all the goat, sheep, cattle, and antelope, and then the Giraffidae. A little taxonomic lesson for this morning. They are, in fact, the largest of the ruminants. Mature bulls can weigh up to 1.2 metric tons, 1.2, 1.3 tons, which is quite heavy. Second place, there's a couple of contenders, eland, elk, moose, which does not occur here in Africa. In fact, deer. There is some deer that naturally occur in Africa. Along the North African coast, there is a small population of red deer. It's called the Barbary red deer, a subspecies of the red deer. But as far as sub-Saharan Africa is concerned, we do not have any natural occurring deer. Introduced populations in South Africa, but no naturally occurring species of deer in sub-Saharan Africa, which means south of the Sahara. Let's see if we can get closer to these giraffe. They seem very comfortable with our presence. They know we're here. Absolutely know we're here. <laughs> A lot of the viewers commenting that they really love all the stories I share and lessons and just a word of thanks to you all for following it you know without you you know I won't have an audience and I love sharing I love speaking about what I love about the bush and stories are a major part of that you know lessons as well you know and i still learn i mean um i just learned a few things from the people i worked with here at pridelands from the eco training instructors to some of the backups that work with me um who's there to help protect us but as well also to gain hours on foot and that's for me very important attribute that all professional guys adopt is that no matter how much experience you have, you always will find somebody that can teach you something. We want to hear from our Wild Earth Kids this World Environment Day. You are the future protectors of our planet and we want to help you understand what needs to be preserved. We saw a termite mound. We got to see a lot of unique animals. Some trees are male and female. That's pretty cool, right? A whole lot of different creatures. It was amazing that we could ask questions. Kids, send in your questions for our special World Environment Day safari on June the 5th. As our global Wild Earth family grows, we know that many of you struggle to get your questions answered during the live safari. Going forward, we will be holding AMAs for our Wild Earth explorers on a regular basis. The first is with our resident leopard whisperer, Tristan Dix. 
Join me for an AMA on the 8th of June, straight after the Sunset Safari. This will be your chance to ask me anything you like. All you have to do is sign up to be an explorer, and you can meet me here on Juma with your questions ready. Yeah. Yeah, well, they did move. I can still see them through the woods, but I think they're just trying to move away from us now. Okay. Doesn't always go to plan, and that's the bush. You can have all the plans in the world. Yeah, sometimes your plan doesn't work out. But you know what? Let's find out from Cedric if his plan has worked out or not. My only plan I had, yeah, at the moment is to babysit uh, the cubs, eh, Clover Panda? That's it, son. That's uh, a little baby sitting all at uh, Columbus, uh, a young male cub, and uh, of course the female cub's just still in the back. I hear Franklin's going, but you can see this 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 boy is uh, definitely on a lazy a lazy boy couch here on a Sunday morning, definitely watching some cartoons. That looks like what he is doing. <laughs> but yeah, no, definitely. But coming to the stories, uh, no, one of the funniest things is, and of course, this is uh, these cubs' uh, grandmother, Tandi. And um, many, many years ago, we were actually, uh, when I was at Nkoro, we were following Tandi the one morning. And uh, she just had cubs. So she just, that was the first litter of cubs she had, I think. And she just had them there towards a place called Juma Old Driveway. There was a little drainage line there. And we found Tandy that morning and we were following her. And we went in front of one of the lodges called Jacobin Lodge. And as we went in front of that uh, lodge, they had like this big open grass fields in front of the lodge. And next moment, doll, uh, Tandy ran into the grass and she dived onto something. And we we're like, what is she doing? And she dived onto, uh, uh, what do you call it, a serval. Now, a serval is a, a cat that you don't see often at all. And we could not believe it. She killed the serval there. And uh, when she killed the serval, like typical Tundi's uh, ruthless ways, and uh, she killed it there and she just left it. So it didn't do anything else with it. So, you know, okay, that's fine. That's crazy. Like, well, that was a crazy sighting. So anyway, we kind of carried on following Tundi. And um, it was not long after that. It was maybe about another hour later into the drive and next moment she went exactly like we had like a termite mound like where this cub is lying on and she went on this termite mound and next moment she went diving at the back of the termite mound and out she came with a, a side striped jackal cub or a pup and uh we saw that happening and was like what are you doing she was killing every little thing around there she came out with this little one uh side striped jackal and she kind of killed it and she just left it on the side and off she went again and it looked like she was on uh like on a wall path, just to to kill anything that was in her way. And of course, we were realizing she was doing that just to make sure that her cubs were safe because the cubs weren't too far from that area. And her cubs were safe from any kind of predator, no matter what, big, small, uh, young, old, no matter what. And I could not believe it. <laughs> Altandi was just ruthless that morning. We were like, our eyes were like, like saucers, like, what is she doing? And of course, she didn't eat any of it. She just killed it and left everything there. So, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Altandi. <laughs> to celebrate World Oceans Day, and create awareness for the role that the oceans play in everyday life. Wild Earth has some brand new dive line merchandise in our shop. T-shirts, sweatshirts, bags and even caps. So take the plunge, head over to our shop and see what you can find. Wild Earth, it's in your nature. We only have one Earth. This phrase highlights the challenges of collective action between nations. It emphasizes the great test of our time. 
achieving environmental change cannot be met by countries acting alone. Head over to the Wild Earth Shop to buy your only One Earth merchandise and create awareness for global change this World Environment Day. Well, Keisha, I can babysit any day, but the Cubs aren't crying. Oh, of course the Cubs aren't crying. They aren't be doing well. As I said, Daddy Panda is watching very closely. Yeah. He's making sure that uh, they're well behaved and there's no crying. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we're definitely, uh, uh, it's one of these moments that I really, uh, well, Keisha, like I can say, it's, it's, it's special, you know, to spend time, with uh, leopard cubs, even leopards, uh, any kind of uh, cubs around here, yeah, those hyena cubs as well, just to have this quality time with them and um, seeing them grow up and seeing their behavior, their characters, it is such an honor, really it is an honor to um, be around here with them and actually show all, the, all you at home as well, um, their day-to-day -day doings, movements and their lives as well so it, it is uh, it is special but uh, uh you know you don't have to look at me like that i'm talking about you yes that's right <laughs> but, yeah, you know, definitely this little boy has got such a beautiful character to him i think he's he's he's, he's a very inquisitive male this Busy bee, yes, I'm sure we can. I'll get old panda to get it. Um, busy bee, that's as far as we can go because you must remember we're not on top of him, we are at a distance, so that is as far as our camera can zoom. Uh, you'll see that our panda's going to zoom in now, and that's going to be as far as we can go. So, sorry, busy bee, as I said, we don't go and stop on top of them, so we do give them their space. So, yeah, that's as far as. Panda can get the camera zoomed into those big paws of this little male leopard. Well, sorry, buddy, boy, I'm not going to call you little anymore. You're becoming a big boy, so yes, you can give me that stare, but yes, you're going, you've got nice big paws coming through. And one day those paws are going to be nice size. One day those are the paws that we are going to be tracking over and over and over. bird in the background there. Go away. Yes, a little go away bird. Gemma, yes, good morning. Definitely is a serious young man. He's got that serious look on him already. For oh, he's such a young cub. He's already got uh, the look and the stare of mom and of grandmom and of great great grandmom. So yeah, he is already working on his stare, on his blue steel look. The Safari Guide of the Year 2022 is approaching us rapidly. This year, we'll be heading to Bushwise Field Guides at the Southern African Wildlife College from the 27th June till the 2nd of July. We will soon meet all our contestants who are vying for the prize of being the very best of the best. And the judges, who will put them through their paces. Join me, Steve Falkenbridge, as we dream it, guide it, win it. If you would like to be a part of the team that shares the wildebeest migration in Kenya live on Wild Earth, then we have some great news for you. There are a few places left to join our expeditions in August and September this year. You'll be staying in an exclusive tented camp with ensuite bedrooms nestled in the riverine woodlands of the Talek River. Head over to our website to book your bucket list experience today. Wild Earth Expeditions. Travel with purpose.
<laughs> and I'm hoping that this little male is going to hold, uh, hang around here for quite some time. It'll be fantastic. I'm trying to figure out, I'm trying to work out how old is Mulawati, his father. Um, I'm trying to think of... Uh, <laughs> While we sit with you, I'm going to try and figure out uh, Mulawati's age, but uh, while we still sit here, let's head over to Chris to see if he's working out his blue steel look. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the blue steel look. I prefer Magnum. I prefer the Magnum look. And BK is going to, in a moment or two, reveal my Magnum look. But first, we have to just look at the bush. Here goes. That's my best Magnum look. Anyway, there's lion tracks here. Ooh, all right. All right. Force multiplier, change. Lion tracks. Okay, that changes things dramatically. This was not here yesterday. We were here yesterday. This was not there. All right. Okay, let's figure out where these lines are going to. This was definitely not here yesterday. All right. Forrest, you can just check up there while I try and figure out what's happening here. This is fresh. This is fresh stuff. I know some of the viewers are saying that's the best model look they've seen. Yeah, I tried my best there. You know, I'm not much of an oil painting. Not the prettiest guy around. Not sure if my wife will agree, though. She thinks I'm very handsome. <laughs> Talking about wife, I can't wait. As much as I love the bush and what I do, I can't wait to get back to them and the kiddies. I do miss them. That is one of those things about being a guide. Is it does come with some sacrifice in terms of time. But you know what? It's all worth it. Going to spend some good time with the family in the next two weeks. Right, quickly, let's go to Cedric. Yes, uh, it looks like uh, the llama's male cub just spotted a Niala coming past here. I want to see what he does. It looks like he was showing interest. He was going down. He was going into like a stalking mode. But it's a, a big male Niala. Is he really going to do anything? Is he really sussing this out now? I'm absolutely fascinated about this. Watch, watch him. Watch him. Can imagine this young male running up to this big male Niala. We don't have visual of the Niala at the moment. He has gone into the bush, but he's just walking right past them, practically maybe about five, six meters past this young male. So he's, a really sh he's a really showing his in intentions. Watch him. Oh, I'm right. just going to go a little bit forward. Yeah. I'm just going to roll forward, yeah? If I can roll forward. Okay, I'm not rolling forward. Ah. Roll forward. Ah. I don't want to start. I don't want to start. Sorry, can you go in there? Oh, they're not Penda. No, it looks like he's lost interest there. Sorry, but yeah, it was just a, a very brief thing. It looked like he wanted to stalk him because it would have been very interesting to see if uh, if he actually would have gone right up to that Niala. But I think he's just still too young. I think he's just still uh, more kind of curious than anything else on that Niala. Sorry about that. <laughs> 
Oh, Blood Devil is going to be some entertainment there. Well, he's still, he's still going, he's still going. Yeah, there he goes, he's stalking. He's stalking. <laughs> Are you a fan of the Juma clan? If the answer to this is yes, then you are cordially invited to our Hyena Hullabaloo starting on the 13th of June. During this week, we want to take a trip down memory lane. Please send in your favorite Juma clan moments to hyena at wildearth.tv by the 7th of June and we will dig into our archives and try our hardest to play it out during this week of hyena celebrations. This is amazing and now she's headed towards the elephants. Yeah, here comes the male behind us. This is the male lion coming over here. He's got... The elephants have huddled up to protect the young ones in the middle and he's going after that girl. And they are the buffalo going after the lion and the lioness, they're still going after them. Look at that guy charging, hey! Uh, Nathan, uh, yeah, go get him, brave boy. I think it won't be too brave. I think, uh, uh, I think it'll be way too brave. There's a Niola going that side now. It's just, it's just bypassing in there. You can see the Niola there, Panda. Yeah, no, that would be very interesting to see this uh, male leopard, young boy goes and how far he stalks or how far he gets to that uh, Niola. Uh, I think he's just behind. I'm going to just go a bit forward, yeah? You can see him, yeah? He's just, yeah. So, there he is. You see him? Uh, just let me know when you've got a visual there. Uh, like that. Good. Watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him, watch him. He's going now. He's trying to follow that Niola. Well, this is all learning curve, so he knows it's too big. He knows it's going to be a problem. See, he went and can sit down now. He knows it's going to be a little bit of a, a problem to get to that uh, big male Niola. And, uh, but it's just a curiosity of a young cub, of a leopard instinct. Typical instinct. Just investigating and thinking, hmm, how does my mom do it? Oh, nice little... <laughs> It's very difficult to see him now there. Oh, there he goes. He's down leopard crawling. Hey, he's really... He's going down leopard crawling now. Oh, my goodness. He's actually going towards it. <laughs> you can do it, my boy. Yeah, I don't know if he's sneaking away. Yeah. I don't know, maybe he's got the moves from Uncle Marips. But we are a little bit far behind, yeah, so I'm just going to try and see if we can see uh, where we can get a better position and uh, uh, for the whole scene, just to see. But I think he's he's gone so very, he's gone very low into that uh, grass now. I think to get view of him now is going to be very difficult. Do you see him at all there? Nah, I think he's gone very low into that grass. We'll just we'll just uh, hang back a bit here yeah, and see what it does. But, uh, he's definitely gone into leopard mode all of a sudden. Uh, we'll just stop just here. Yeah. Okay, we, we don't have any visual of him now, so we're just going to hang back here yeah, and just take a look. The Niara is still not too far from him, but uh, I think it's just more curiosity than anything else that's uh, got him going. I think he's gone into that thick, thick grass now. From a very sleepy boy to a, a young boy that's uh, trying his best to get to a Niala. <laughs> Lisa G, good morning. Thank you for joining us. So uh, yes, it is too funny, but it is very, very cute and very sweet. On and just how these little ones are still kind of practicing on how close you can get to 
an animal. Most probably you'll get there, you'll get close, and you'll feel very proud. You can see that Niala walking past there now. A beautiful antelope just walking past, and you'll see maybe this one might come past us again because he's trying to figure out the best way towards uh, that big antelope, something too big for him. <laughs> you can imagine him bringing that antelope down, bringing that Niala down. It'll be, <laughs> if his mom comes back here, he has uh, him and his sister busy feeding on a Niala. That would be, a, <laughs> that would be so funny. <laughs> She'll, well, Tlalamba would have uh, caught a little Steenbuck for the family and a uh, little boy would have caught a Niala. Uh, definitely, <laughs> Nadine, it will be the shock of the year uh, if he has to bring that thing down. <laughs> Hmm? Yeah. That's good. Uh, maybe she, watch if the Niala sees him. Maybe picking up the scent. Listen, might bark. Let's listen. It might bark, make a funny noise. I think it picks up the scent. Let's listen. There. And Yala picked up on the scent, a little bit of wind, as you can see the grass waving around. Yeah, that's an alarm call of the Niala, just like the kudu, also got that barking call. Hmm? With the Niala? Yeah. Uh, I think the Niala is not going to hang around. Picks up on the scent or sees a, a leopard cub busy stalking it. So I think he's also going to say, you know, he's not going to hang around. Just now mom is here and then it could be a problem. So I think that's why that Niala is moving away very quickly. It's Scottish Lawrence as your underwater biologist. We have a turtle! So this is the knife symbol for a turtle. So today is not any ordinary day, it is World Ocean Day. Hello everyone from sunny Namibia. My name is Cameron Pierce and this year I'll be representing Ongava Game Reserve at the Safari Guide of the Year 2022 edition. You know, a lot of people have asked me what it would be like to win the competition and it would obviously be an incredible privilege, but uh, even just to be selected as one of the five finalists is an honor that I, I never expected and special to be a part of it for this year. Of course, uh, yeah, that was a little Young male cubs, uh, uh, he has been busted by that uh, Niala. The Niala did see him. So, of course, uh, that Niala took off and uh, no more no more hunting. But I don't know where that little one is now. I think he might be just lying underneath one of the bushes. Maybe he's just taking a bit of a break and staying out of sight of that Niala. No, I never know. Well, then again, I never know what he's up to. Looks like he's... As a sleeping, then awake, sleeping, then awake. As up to his mischievous ways, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, no, definitely. What a morning to be spending with this ones. Uh, Chantel, good morning. What will I do if the lumber jumps onto the vehicle? Uh, Chantel, I think I'll definitely scratch her behind her ears. I think that'll be the first thing, just to give her a good old scratch and see if she like kind of tilts her head to the one side when I scratch her and maybe tilt her head to the other side when I scratch her on the ear. Uh, no. Nah, I don't think I'll do that. I think I will, I will remain very still in my seat and uh, not to move at all. I think I'll just, uh, I'll be frozen and, uh, yeah, and I'll close my eyes and hope I will see another day. 
But uh, it has happened before many years ago, not with me, of course, but with another guide yeah, uh, there far in the Western sector uh, where they had a very relaxed uh, leopard. But this was many years ago. And uh, he was driving and he saw a leopard. He stopped and then this leopard approached, a female leopard approached the, the Land Rover. And, of course, the guy had his rifle there on the dashboard. You know, they've got those uh, rifle handle, uh, handles or holders. And... Um, the female leopard jumped on his bonnet and pretty much uh, his tracker had to sit still and the female leopard turned, put a front two, uh, a front paws on the dashboard over the rifle, looked at him and then she sat down on the bonnet, started grooming herself. She got up, she smelt the tracker's head, like at the back of the tracker's head and then she walked off and jumped off on the other side of the vehicle and off she went. So it has happened before. Uh, that situation, but many, many moons ago. So, yeah, that that happens to me, definitely, Chantal. I will freeze myself to a point of not even breathing. I will not even blink. My name's Liam Henderson. I'm a guide at the Homestead Lodge on Nambiti Private Game Reserve in KwaZulu-Natal. I think Safari Guide of the Year is a great competition to be a part of. I'm somewhat nervous for the tracking part of the competition as being in KZN now, uh, I've been, haven't been exposed to the low felt animals and tracks and signs that are so apparent up there. My name is Nico Britz. I am originally from Cape Town. I worked in the Eastern Cape for about nine years before I started working at Bushwise Field Guides in the Low Felt, uh, close to Makalali Private Game Reserve. So I'm hoping that by doing this, this could inspire the younger or newer guides coming into the industry to do the same. All right, uh, well, I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to make my way away from this uh, area. Um, I think I'm going to uh, start moving along central, heading a little bit east towards Giraffe Crossing. But what a morning to see th these little ones. But yeah, uh, I think uh, what we shall do, continue. And uh, while we continue, let's head over to Chris and see what he will do if there was a leopard on his car. Funny enough, I actually had a leopard once jump onto the bonnet of the car once, just briefly, and it realized, oh, this is not a rock, and jumped off. It was so quick that I couldn't really react. It was on, and then looked at us and jumped off immediately. It was in a very open area in the southern Sabi Sands, and it probably just tried to get some vantage point or whatever, very briefly. But if it would jump into the car, I tell you, that will be pandemonium. It's not something I would want to experience. Actually, BK and I were watching the, watching the show you know, while we off air and we were watching Cedric answering that question, what he would do. And BK <laughs> said Cedric's gonna yell scream at the top of his voice and Bika reckons it will be a very high-pitched sound sorry Cedric we had to <laughs> nah, no nah, Cedric's a solid guy he won't <laughs> um, cheetahs often do that uh, where they become very habituated to vehicles that especially areas up north I've seen open areas they do that they jump onto the, the bonnet of the car much like they would do on termite mounts. <laughs> but um, anyway, sorry, I had, to, I had to, I couldn't resist to just leave one last little, little chirp on Cedric. I'm sure he's gonna come back at me tenfold. <laughs> anyway, 
Yeah, we're getting close towards the later stages of today's safari. I'm just slowly edging through the bush at the moment, just sucking up the last little bits of what's left of my shift. I'm going to be back soon. I'm only taking a short break, about 10, 12 days. Then I'll be back. So I'm not going to disappear. I'm going to be like a headache. I'm going to keep coming back. <laughs> But I absolutely loved the last five weeks here at Pridelands and just want to thank Wild Earth and Eco Training. Salt and Pepper, thank you. Lovely comments. What a blessing you mentioned. You know, the pleasure is all mine to be able to bring this to you. It's what I love for. It's what I love. Like I said, I love sharing. The bush has given me so much in my life since childhood. And this is my way of giving it back. Create awareness. And show people what's out here. Whether it be guests who come on safari with me or just me spending time in the bush myself. It's a lifestyle. It's pretty much, it's not a job, it's not a career, it's a lifestyle. Hello everyone, my name is Ruan Groble. I'm from Lion Sands Game Reserve and being nominated for the Safari Guide of the Year came as somewhat of a surprise to me. I was very excited and quite nervous as well in the beginning uh, to tackle this task. But it's, it's, it's quite a prestigious event and it, it means that you are recognized. And I'm quite happy to be recognized. It means quite a lot to me. My name is Solomon Lobu. I am working at Sengita Kruger National Park. I am very excited today to be one of the guys that have been nominated to select it to participate in the Safari Guide of the Year. I'm an activator. Uh, I like starting something, motivating others to become better. I am positive. Uh, I like to um, focus on the positive side of the situation. Corbett. Look at that fella. Wow. Handsome. Handsome. And I'm really hoping my dad is watching. And he specifically asked me if he can get a big cootie ball on live television that will be his day made. Rosemary, thank you for the lovely comments there as well. And I'm definitely going to say hello on your behalf to my family. I'll only see them tomorrow. I'm heading to Pretoria today, our capital. And then uh, tomorrow from there back to my, our family farm where I'm based. Close to a town called Tabazimbi in the southwestern parts of the Limpopo. So it's literally, if you take a straight line from here and you go straight west across the Limpopo province to the other side, the western side, that is where I'm based. But you guys, should I move a bit backwards? Are you good there? Okay. I'm just gonna move a meter backwards. Or forward. What do you prefer? Forward. DK is just giving me the, like a stare, like a dugger boy. <laughs> He's just chuckling there in the back. Oh. What a fine specimen. Look at this fellow. I'm 
Gemma, good morning. Gemma's also commenting about this beautiful, handsome kudu bull. Imagine having to carry those horns day in, day out. And uh, I mean, just look at the young bull behind it. Look at the neck, still thin. I mean, that's a year and a half old, approximately. And then this big guy in front of it. Just look at that neck. It's enormous. You're going to have a neck like that to carry those horns around. And they're eating. <clears throat> it's interesting. You don't often see kudus in the open. They're woodland creatures. They like brush and thickets. The Safari Guide of the Year 2022 is approaching us rapidly. This year, we'll be heading to Bushwise Field Guides at the Southern African Wildlife College from the 27th June till the 2nd of July. We will soon meet all our contestants who are vying for the prize of being the very best of the best. And the judges who will put them through their paces. Join me, Steve Falkenbridge, as we dream it, guide it, win it. It's a very nutritious plant. That white mouse whiskers, Gliomi. It's uh, also referred to as pretty ladies. This is the white one. There's a blue one. Gliomi irta. And then there's a yellow one as well called Gliomi angustifolia. This one is Cleomi Gynandra. And if you ever see that plant, unfortunately, I'm not close enough to show you that. We will chase the kudu away. But it's a fantastic plant to consume. And the kudus seem to agree. Hi there, Amazon. Said, loved the last five weeks at Pridelands. Thank you for that. And like I said, I'm just taking a short break and I will be back. I'm not going to tell you who's taking over from me. It is a surprise. You're going to have to wait until this afternoon, but I guarantee you, you're going to enjoy this person. It's somebody you do know, but more than that, I'm not going to reveal. Just going to have to wait and see. It's been a delightful five weeks. Reached the end of today's safari, as well as the end of my shift as I mentioned I will be back in about two weeks to bring you more of this hopefully and enjoy the time with whoever's taking over from me it's time for me to go home and spend time with family And I'm really going to miss this place, even though it's just for a short while. And I'm really going to miss you as well, on top of that. So goodbye, everybody. 
I'll see you soon. Goodbye. More kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised.